Hi everyone. In this very short video, I will discuss with you the relevance of Harold Laswell's communication model to the study of media in general and to the study of media theory in particular. Harold Laswell's model actually sketches a very simple but very comprehensive framework for categorizing descriptive media theory, that is, for classifying the host of descriptive media theories into specific groups and specific types. So, something that can help us here in this um, theorization of media is a recall to Laswell's model that was produced in 1960. Laswell asked the central question for anyone who wants to understand media and structures, functions, industries, messages, contents, effects, and so on. He asks his famous question, who says what, in which channel, to whom, with what effects? So if you pay attention with me here, there are five distinctive elements in this question, and each one corresponds to a very important layer, a very important area in media studies. So who refers to the communicator? And here, we it refers actually, as far as media theorization is concerned, to theories that have dealt with control, ownership of media industries, media organizations, etc. The second element in this question is says what? So here we are concerned with the message itself, how it is, uh, uh, let's say, articulated, how it is written as a text. So here there are a set or there is a set of theories that have dealt with the content of media messages. Well, content analysis theories. And these theories will help us uh, analyze texts and so on. The third element in this question is in which channel? So here, Laswell refers actually to the medium or to the different media through which uh, uh, the media message is uh, channeled and transmitted. So here, for example, the radio is not like television, is not like newspaper, is not like the internet, not like a blog, not like a social network. So here, there is a set of theories that cope with this domain of media studies, which is uh, media or medium theories. Um, the fourth element is to whom, and here we're concerned with the receiver, the one who receives the message, that is the audiences, the large masses, since we're talking about mass communication, it's not just interpersonal or group or organizational communication, it's mass communication here, so we're concerned with audiences as large masses and how they receive media messages, what kind of meaning do they make out of media texts, for example? How do they understand media messages? Uh, I mean, uh, what kind of audiences are they in the first place? Are they just um, like stupid uh, audiences that listen and follow media messages to the letter? Or they are well-informed, smart, intellectual audiences that um, perceive media messages critically, analytically, asking questions, etc., etc. So, audience theories will help us understand this uh, area uh, of media um, scholarship. Last but not least is with what effect? That is, after all, our exposure to media messages and media uh, channels and programs and shows and you name it must have an effect on us. Of course, media effects theories are so many. I mean, I mean uh, historically speaking, the, um, the first scholars, the first sociologists and media analysts who uh, dealt with uh, media studies in the beginning of the 20th century 
coped with the effects of media on audiences, uh, I mean, uh, during the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and even after the Second World War. So effects theories will help us understand, of course, how uh, media messages affect and influence uh, uh, our behaviors, our attitudes, uh, uh, etc. Uh, 